Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Easter Hill United Methodist Church. Welcome to this fourth Sunday in the season of Advent, the last Sunday of Advent before we celebrate the birth of Jesus on Christmas. I'm so glad that you have tuned in to be with us this morning. What a joy. What a joy we've experienced this Advent season. And today, I just want to focus on love. Can you say love? Love. Just say love. Love. And I want you to feel the warmth of God's love a shut abroad in your heart this day. Let us pray. Oh, come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and be with us. Come. Speak to us. Come and touch our hearts. Come, let us know that you love us. Come, speak to us, reminding us that you haven't forgotten about us. Come, speak to us, letting us know that you're doing a new thing through the birth of your son, Jesus the Christ. Lord God, we just thank you for loving us, loving us unconditionally, loving us as we are. And so accept us where we are this morning, knowing that through your grace and through your power, we're moving on to perfection. And so bless us this day that we might be a blessing to you and to others. Be with us now as we sing our opening song. O come, O come, all ye faithful.
George and Colleen Everly and their two children, Noah and Journey, to light our Advent candles. As a reminder that God's people have always been people of hope, we relight the first candle of Advent as a symbol of Christ our hope. second candle of heaven as a symbol of Christ far away. We relight the third candle of Advent as a symbol of Christ our joy. A reading from Luke 1, 46-49. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. From who do you receive love? To whom do you give love? How do you experience God's love in your life? When have you felt most loved? Today, we light the fourth candle as a symbol of Christ our love. God of love, give us confidence in your love for us so that we will freely share our love with others. Oh, come. come. Oh, come. Emmanuel. Amen. Amen.
songs that we were singing this morning, Oh Come All You Faithful, means we got to get up and go. We got to get up and go and see. And, and when we, once we see, we rejoice. And, and we just don't stay there rejoicing, but we got to go tell it. We got to go tell it on the mountain all over. The good news, Jesus is here. symbols of those candles just spoke about Jesus. Just looking at those candles reminded me that we are in this season of Advent and that soon Jesus is going to be born. And as we lit the Advent candles this morning, each week we've lit one candle and then another and then another until all four have lit and it's just gotten brighter and brighter and brighter. And that's who Jesus is. He's the light of the world to come and shine in the dark time. To remind us that he's here sharing his love with us. And so this morning as we focus on love and as we prepare for our prayer time, I want to share a letter that was sent to the church. It says, we the Kinship Support Service Program and our caregivers are again sending you a thank you letter. Also included are individual thank you notes from our families. During COVID-19 pandemic, 
when some agencies are not, when nonprofits are struggling, your congregation continues to support the families of this community. The 25 gift cards valued at $25 each for our families for food during Thanksgiving were truly a blessing. Your congregation continues to bless our agency and the families we serve. It doesn't go unnoticed how Easter Hill continues to help support the community. Again, a big thank you to you and the congregation. And then from one of the recipients said, thank you so much for the care and inspiration that you have given to me. I was completely without hope feeling completely alone. You and this program helped us in so many ways. The inspiration that you put out is genuine and caring. Thank you seems too little to say, so God bless you. We would also like to say that the gift card for Lucky's helped us so much. Thank you again and God bless you and your staff Love made real. Love made tangible. Love offering hope. Love offering hope. When we received a letter from our district superintendent, Reverend Shinya Goto, wishing us a blessed advent and a happy Merry Christmas. He said, it's been a pleasure meeting you and hearing your stories as I have presided at your charge conferences. He writes to the churches in our district. These stories have been a confirmation that 2020 has been a year like no other. There was a story of a Brazilian person who discovered one of our churches through online worship and decided to join. There were stories of churches doubling their efforts to serve the community, knowing how devastatingly the pandemic has affected their neighbors. There were stories of pastors staying up all night learning to make worship videos. There were also stories of frustration and loneliness as they battled the reality of coping with social distances and stay-at-home orders and fear for what the future might hold. However, the future may unfold. I take comfort in trusting that we will all journey together and that God is still in control. Love made real. Through acts of kindness, through acts of compassion, through acts of thoughtfulness, lives touched, Lives change, hope offered. We give God thanks and praise. Amen. Amen. Give God thanks for the prayers offered yesterday through the drive-through community. One that says, I'm, I pray for healing for the entire world. Another saying, prayers of thanksgiving for the mother and grandmother home from the hospital after a bout with COVID. Prayers for our country and environment and justice. Prayers for those grieving for purpose, peace, and joy in 2021. Prayers for families. Prayers for coworkers for a co-worker whose mother-in-law is dying. Prayers for a granddaughter from a grandmother. Prayers for relatives in another part of the country that have contracted COVID-19 on a respirator and receiving dialysis for that cousin's wife who's also hospitalized with the virus. But we're thankful that she is improving. We pray for those 
that will have surgery this week. We rejoice in those who had procedures this past week, who had hospital stays and whose procedures were successful and who were home from the hospital. We pray for the Hazard family and the passing of Doris Hazard, whose funeral service will be this Wednesday. Lord God, we thank you for watching over us this year, for caring for us, for reminding us that you make a way out of nowhere. We thank you for things we've been able to accomplish that we never thought or imagined would be possible. But your wisdom and your gentle hand have guided us. And so we thank you for your son, Jesus the Christ, who continues to teach us who continues to walk with us and hope helps us to know that nothing is impossible with you. Lord, we thank you for this intentional time called Advent. We ask that you would bless us as we prepare to enter the Christmas season, those 12 days of Christmas. And ask that you ready us and prepare us for 2021. For we know we, you have new things in store for us. And so we are excited. We are excited. And we will be ready. In the sweet and precious name of Jesus the Christ, who taught his children and teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. It's offering time. Lord. It's offering time. Lord. I've been hearing people all week saying, Joy, just offer yourself. And so I'm thankful for the ways that you have been offering yourself in 2020. I thank you for paying your tithes faithfully this year to keep our church up and going to keep our church strong to keep us enabling us to do the ministries in which God has called us you still have time if you're behind on your tithes or your pledges you still have time get them in this week get them in next week someone asked me a couple people have asked me pastor are we going to send out a pledge card I said, we're working on it. Talked with Dr. Gordon yesterday. So we'll be getting a letter and a pledge card out to you soon. We know you don't need that pledge card because you're faithful to your tithes and your pledge, but we need to receive it so that we know what 2021 may look like financially. And so thank you for being a blessing, not just to the church, not just to the community, but for returning thanks to God. God loves a cheerful giver. And I hope that you've seen that the ways that you've given, you haven't gone without. God has continued to bless you richly. And so we give God thanks. We know that every good and perfect gift comes from God. And so we praise God from whom all blessings go. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Oh, one of our blessings is children's time.
Good afternoon, good evening. Miss Vicki is so happy that you let me come into your house today. I wanna share a story with you today. You know I love to tell stories. I wanna tell a story a long, long time ago before you were born, even before I was born. There was a man named Conrad. Now Conrad was so sad because he lived in his house all by himself. His neighbors and friends would come by and every day he would say the same old thing. They would say, Conrad, how are you doing today? And Conrad would say, better than some, not as well as others. But one day they came by his house and they heard him singing. And you might know this song, so you can sing this song with me. He was singing, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. They said, my goodness, Conrad, what's gotten into you? Why are you so happy? He said, I had a dream and in my dream, Jesus told me he's gonna come and visit me. I am so happy. He started decorating his house and getting ready. So his friends said, well, we better leave and let you get ready for Jesus. So they left the house and Conrad put wood on the fire. He started baking cookies. He was so excited waiting for Jesus to come. Pretty soon he heard a knock on his door, knock, knock, knock. And he opened the door and he said, welcome Jesus. But standing at his door was not Jesus. It was a homeless man. He said, I'm so cold. Do you mind my brother if I just come into your house and get warm by your fire? He looked at the homeless man. He had on a raggedy coat and holes in his shoes. And he said, yes, come on in my brother. I'm waiting for a special guest, but I can let you get warm by my fire. And he said, in my garage, I have some shoes and a coat that I can give to you. So he gave him some warm tea and they sat by the fire. Before he left, he put some cookies in his pocket and he put, let him go on his way. Pretty soon he went to go put another log on the fire and see if he still had enough cookies left for Jesus. And about that time, he heard another knock, knock, knock on the door. He ran to the door and he said, I've been expecting you and he opened up the door but it wasn't Jesus. It was a little old lady who was all bent over because she was carrying sticks of wood on her back to make a warm fire. She said, my dear brother, I am so hungry. Do you mind if I come in a moment and you can give me something to eat? And Conrad said, well, I'm waiting for a very special guest, but of course, my sister, come in. I have a big pot of soup that I made for my guests and you can have soup. So he gave her a warm bowl of soup and they sat down by the fire. And when she was nice and full and ready to go, he slipped some cookies in her pocket and sent her on her way. Pretty soon he got really frustrated. He looked at his watch and he said, my goodness, what's taking Jesus so long to come? About that time, he heard a sound outside. <laughs> what was mommy? He said, what is that sound? Could it be somebody's crying outside? So he opened his door and he looked outside and there he saw a little girl. She was crying, she was so sad. He said, what's the matter? She said, I can't find my way home, I'm lost. You see, I was playing outside and then it got too dark and now I can't find my way home. Can you please help me find my way home? He said, I really don't want to leave my house because I'm waiting for a very special guest. But come on, I guess I can take you home. Where do you live? She said, well, my house is a white house. It has green shutters and I built a snowman outside and my mommy put a wreath on the door with a red ribbon. Oh, I think I know right where you live, he said. 
He went inside, he got some cookies, he slipped the cookies in her pocket, and he took the little girl home. Well, when he got back home, he was so frustrated. He was glad that he had helped the people, but he wanted to see Jesus. So he got down on his knees and he said, Jesus, why didn't you come to visit me like you said? He was so sad, he cried himself to sleep. Well, once he went to sleep, all of a sudden, he was awakened by a bright, bright light in the house. Now, it wasn't a light when, like when you turn on your light in the house. It was a bright light. And he heard a voice. Conrad, I did come to visit you. You know the homeless man that came and you gave him a warm fire? That was me. And then you know when the bent over little lady came and you gave her something to eat, that was me. And when the little girl came and you helped her find her way, that was me coming to visit you too. And I noticed everyone that you came, you showed them love. So that's what you showed to me. Every time I came to visit, you showed me love. And Conrad, that is the greatest gift of all, to show love. So did you like that story? Miss Vicki wants you to remember that during this time when people are giving you gifts and you're giving people gifts, the greatest gift of all to give is love. When you see someone walking down the street, smile, show them, say Merry Christmas. And always remember the greatest gift of all is Jesus. Will come upon you, 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, well, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from this is the word of God for the people of God. Her, hold this word in your heart. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 The story continues. The very song of prayers. Luke 1, 46b through verse 55. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in their thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't think Brother Mark missed a key on that piano. Sing it with power. Sing it with joy. Sing it with love. And Brother Louis back there chiming along. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Oh, my goodness. I was going to ask how you doing. How you doing? Yeah. Uh, you got to be doing a little better now. Amen. Amen. But really now, how are you doing? How are you really doing? You, you, you know, Friday I woke up and I realized Christmas was a week away. Yes. How did it come upon me so quickly? It seemed the season of Advent just began. The waiting, the expecting, the anticipating, the reflecting on hope, the way, peace, and joy. Maybe it had been focusing on work or on family and friends who have been sick, some with cancer, some with COVID, some with other diseases or troubles in their lives. Yes. I knew Christmas was coming. Well, well. But how did it sneak up on me? Right. I've been hearing the Christmas carols everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I've been seeing the decorations. Heck, we even have a beautifully decorated tree in our home. Maybe you're like me and are working to finish up those last cards and purchase those last gifts. In the midst of the final rush, I offer these words of grace and gentle care. Slow down. Slow down. Take your time. Breathe. And be extra careful while out walking or driving. Yes. Earlier in the service, a bus drove by. And the sign on the bus said, Give joy. I like the first part of that. But the other part of it was give a scratcher. Yeah. <laughs> and the only way you can get joy from the scratcher is if that scratcher wins. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Well, this morning we're going to talk about giving joy, giving love. Yeah. Jesus the Christ. Right. Let us pray. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for such a wonderful child whose name is called Jesus, who is love. We thank you for Jesus who knows all about us and loves us anyway. We thank you for Jesus who walks with us through the floods and through the fires. Yes. We thank you for your son Jesus who's working to make us whole. We thank you for his love that teaches us how to love ourselves and to love one another. We need your love. We need your love, oh God. So we ask you for it. We thank you in advance. In your precious name. Amen. Can you imagine that first Christmas? God was trying to decide what would be the perfect gift for his people. For his people down on earth. He thought and he thought. He wanted to give them something that would last. He wanted to give them something that would let the people know how much he loved them. Because he knew his people would be on the move. 
He wanted to give them something that would travel well with them. Something that would be kept close to them. Something that wouldn't wear out. That couldn't get lost. And if it did, they would find it. He wanted to give them something they could use. Not a fad, like the eight track, or the cassette player, or those other devices we throw out or store in our garage when something new comes along. He wanted to give them something that could stand the test of time. He decided not to give them something, but to give them some one. He decided to give them himself. Yeah. He decided to come down in the flesh to be with his people forever. The incarnation, God in the flesh in the form of Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. Praise the Lord. It may have been a surprise that first Christmas, but it shouldn't be a surprise to us. We have heard the story of the Annunciation by the angel Gabriel to the old priest Zachariah, telling him that his wife Elizabeth, old and barren, would be conceiving a child who would be named John, and that John would grow up with a mission and a purpose. He would be out and about, particularly in the wilderness places, shouting to whoever had ears to hear, to be baptized and to repent, and to get themselves ready for the one they had been waiting for, the Messiah, the anointed one, his cousin, Jesus. Fast forward six months, from the angel Gabriel's first appearance to Elizabeth. He appears again, this time to a young woman in Nazareth, engaged but not married, to announce to her that she had been chosen to give birth to the Son of God. Hallelujah. What shocking news to her. That wasn't in her life's plans. But she said yes. When you say yes to God, yeah. your life will change in unexpected ways. Yeah. Your life will have meaning and purpose. Your life will be filled with wonderful, unimagined surprises along the way. Oh, there will be some bumps along the way. But I guarantee you there will be more joy this sadness. All right. Mary had been chosen, favored by God. Too many think of God as an ATM <laughs> who just pours out blessing after blessings. Well. Yes, God is in the blessing business. Yeah. However, we shouldn't equate God's favor with good life meaning social standing and wealth and good health. R. Allen Culpepper writes in the New Interpreter's Bible, Mary, God's favorite one, was blessed with having a child out of wedlock who would later be executed as a criminal. Acceptability, prosperity, and comfort have never been the essence of God's blessing. The story is so familiar that we let its familiarity mask its scandal. <laughs> if Mary embodies the scandal, mm. she also exemplifies the obedience that should flow from blessing. Mary was favored and we would and would bear a king, but only if she gave herself obediently in response to God's call. The greatest blessings are bound up 
in the fellowship God shares with us. They are not rewards separate from that fellowship. When Mary questions Gabriel, the angel points to the example of Elizabeth making the case that nothing is impossible for God. Right. Nothing, nothing is impossible for God. God will find a way to fulfill God's promises. God will use who God chooses. Right. Yes. Nothing is impossible for God. Right. Ain't that good news? Yeah. Yeah. Like Mary, who said yes, will you say yes and allow God to use you to help make the impossible possible and usher in God's kingdom? Yesterday was a great day here at Easter Hill. One of many great days that Easter Hill has been blessed with this year. God blessed us to feed the homeless and the hungry at the grip shelter. We had 31 people attending the prayer ministry in the morning, praying for one another, for families, for the community, for the world. I don't really call us having that many people right. in prayer meeting on a Saturday morning. Yes. Right. And there were several regulars that were missing. God's doing a new thing. Right. There was lots of laughter, joy, and learning as we studied and prayed together, as we shared love with one another. Our angel tree ministry is a blessing to families who have loved ones that are incarcerated. Through the giving of church members and friends, 27 children were blessed yesterday to receive Christmas gifts. Oh, to see the joy on their faces. For me? Really? Wow! The drive through Communion was another blessing. Like the baby that leapt for joy in Elizabeth's womb, my heart rejoiced to see friends drive from an hour away to see a mother and a daughter, to see a mother and a son, to see a husband and a wife, to see tears as we prayed together in fellowship, to see the joy of communing with God through the bread and the cup in fellowship. Oh, God is real. Yes. God is yes. so yes. real. Yes. Even folk driving down the street, watching, wave, and yell, hey, Merry Christmas. Amen. Who could have imagined the drive-through communion at the beginning of the year? God will find a way to keep us connected to him and yes. to one another yes. in the body of Christ. You see, God wants to have a love affair with us Amen. through Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is in a committed relationship with you and me. Right. He will be with you in good times. Jesus will be with you in bad times. Right. He will be with you when you disagree with him. He will love you when you don't feel you can love or forgive yourself. He is there to support, guide, and show you the way. Jesus is in it for the long haul. Yeah. Through it all, his steadfast love endures yeah. forever. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I want no better friend. And I want to love him back with my mind, with my body, and my soul. I want to give him my heart. Let us give God thanks for coming in the flesh, for coming to love us and to show us how to love. Thank you, Jesus. Robert Corn Morris, Corin Morris says, love is the capacity to see both the good and evil in people, but to love the good. To see both the excellent 
and the medio me mediocrity, but to encourage the excellence. Mm -hmm. yeah. To see the wellness and the sickness. Mm -hmm. And to strengthen the wellness. All right. Before all else, love is the capacity to see everyone and everything as interconnected. Yeah. Umbaktu, I am because you are. Held together in one cosmic embrace. Mary Lou Redding writes, God calls us to come home for Christmas. God calls us to come back from all those places where we have settled for less than the fullness of life promised to us in Christ. God calls us back from all the ambitions and possessions we have pursued, thinking that they would satisfy us. God calls us to let go of any bitterness and resistance to forgive that block the light of love from warming us. God calls us to come home, to rest, to be embraced yeah. by the one who loves us as we are. Yeah. Yeah. God offers us a place where we are fully known and also fully accepted. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We all want to be loved. Mm -hmm. And we all want somebody to love. What lifts us up? Well, the song says, love lifted me. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked for with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Yes. Mary honors and glorifies God. She praises God, her Savior and Rescuer. Sisters and brothers, God is looking on you with favor. Yes. The scripture tells us that perfect love casts out fear. Yes. What is love? Mm -hmm. Who is love? Mm -hmm. God is love. Amen. Amen. Yes. God is love. Yes. Perfect love. Yes. Manifested in the flesh in Jesus Christ yeah. and his perfect love cast out fear. Oh, numerous times we hear Jesus saying, do not be afraid, mm -hmm. for I am with you. With you. All right. Jesus is love personified in the flesh. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for coming down to earth. Thank you, Thank you Jesus, for loving us. We love you. Merry Christmas. Yes. Merry Christmas. Yes. Amen. 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 Oh, so much joy. In the midst of so much sickness. In the midst of so much pain. In the midst of so much uncertainty. We can still say joy to the world. Because Jesus is with us. Jesus has blessed us. Jesus has brought us through. Even when we're grieving and we're suffering, Jesus knows about it and it's his love that lifts us up out of the pit. And so where those don't have hope, can't see the joy, we who are people of hope can see the joy and we got to sing about it because we know that God has the last word. God has the final word. The year may be over, but life is not over. For we know that we can have life eternal as we walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let us sing. Joy to the world. Joy to the world.
And God loves you. And God goes out of his way to show you in many different ways that you are loved. We're going to keep celebrating here at East Hill. On Christmas Eve, also called December 24th, at 7 p.m., we'll have our Christmas Eve service. On December 26th through January 1st, Black Methodist for Church Renewal will have a Kwanzaa celebration. Each of our churches taking a night. And so you can go to BMCRCN for Black Methodist for Church Renewal, California, Nevada, at 7 o'clock each of those nights to watch what I know is going to be an incredible week of celebration. At our Christmas Eve service, our offering, an offering will be taken, and that offering will go to support Africa University, our United Methodist University in Zimbabwe. And so we just want to support our brothers and sisters at that university as they continue to pursue their education and change the continent of Africa and the world. Amen. 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 Hope, love, joy, the way. Having hope, staying in the way, being in touch with the joy that you have deep in your soul, and the love that's deep in your soul and comes from our Savior, Jesus the Christ, will bring you peace. Peace meaning shalom, meaning wholeness, for the Lord wants us to have wholeness of mind, body, and spirit. And so we at Easter Hill wish each of you a Merry Christmas. A Merry Christmas filled with peace, filled with love, filled with joy. So go tell it on the mountain. Go sing joy to the world that our Lord Jesus has come. God bless you. We love you. Amen.